So July 23rd to the 31st was actually National Moth Week. However, because I love procrastinating, it's my middle name and I also apparently cannot pronounce it, I am recording this audio on October 26th, four months after I finished the project. <laughs> Better late than never, I guess. First up, quick overview of the project. I have a super flat world that I just practice architecture in and during Moth Week, I was like, hey, I like moths. I can build why not build giant moth? So thus this project was born. Second, I'm also not a pro builder as much as I like building. I mean, I like to think I did great. However, some of you guys are gonna look at it and be like, what is this cringe? She didn't build the entire organ structure of the moth and didn't include every organ, including it's like left pinky toe. What is this? What is this? Yeah, please shut up. No, I don't care. And finally, all facts will just be coming from Wikipedia because listen, I am in college right now. If you're asking me to cite something for a project that is in no way related to school, much less a grade, shut up, please, please just shut up. First up, we have the Luna Moth. The Latin for this is Actius Luna, which actually translates to activities of the moon, which I don't think it's that creative. I'm going to be honest here. All moths do their activities in the moonlight. That's sort of like their gimmick. I'm showing off this guy first because Luna Moths are my favorite moths, and I've actually seen them in real life. Not alive though, however, sadly, but we have a security light in our backyard, and I often find their dismembered corpses laying there. Just the wing parts. Don't know what happens to the bodies, and I'm not sure if I want to know, so we're just going to keep that to ourselves. Another interesting th fact about these guys is they're part of the Saturniidae family, which means they don't have mouths. Any moths in this family will only have vestigial mouths, meaning like they're not able to eat with them, which is major L. You have the body part, can't even eat with it, come on. Sort of like us with the appendix, so I mean, I don't know if I'm really one to talk. Because of that, they have very short lifespans. It's a soul for a soul. They get really big, really fluffy, really pretty. They live about two weeks. Moving on to the actual build, I have mixed opinions on it. Like I said, the Luna Moth is my favorite moth. However, as you can tell, it's a little bit scuffed. We're gonna give it a pass because it was the first moth I worked on, but I did not anticipate it being this big. And as such, I had to do some quick adjustments once I started the bottom wing or else it was gonna be building into the ground. And that would have looked even worse. I am very proud of the glass though. As you can tell, like if you look at that block, the lime, it was way too bright. And for a bit, I was like really stumped. I laid out the moth and I got the design done, but I was like, this just doesn't look right. And then I had an epiphany, a moment of genius. And I was like, hey, yo, glass exists. As such, I got the color down as close as I can get it. You can still see the eye spots under there too. They also give them a little bit of a milky effect. All in all, I'm going to rate this moth 7 out of 10. I did much better with a few of my other builds, as you'll soon see. But this does hold a special place in my heart and I'm very proud of the glass because, you know, big brain. So I think 7 out of 10 is a good placement for this moth. Her name shall be Renee. And here's the final product. Up next is the Polyphemus moth. The Latin name is Entheria Polyphemus, and it's named after the Greek myth of Polyphemus, who was a cyclops. However, cyclopses are known for one particular trait, and that is having one eye. This moth has one, two, three, four. So I feel like we're already having a little bit of inaccuracies, and the trend continues for reasons why I don't like this moth. One, the color. Two, the shape. Three, the pattern. Altogether, this combines to make just a very bland build. Like the moth itself in real life, it's actually pretty cool. It has some nuances, a little bit shiny, looks pretty fluffy, but that doesn't translate well into Minecraft because fluff is a foreign concept unless I wanted to add grass all over this thing, but that would make it green. And as you can tell, this is not green. We're rating it five out of 10. The name's Gerald the first. Final product.
Next up, we have the Rosy Maple Moth. Its Latin name is Dryocampa rubicundra, which is very fancy. A favorite thing about this moth is that it's a small boy. It can fit on your fingertip. Very cute. Cute in real life. Even cuter in block game. Unfortunately, it's part of the Saturnia D class, so no mouth. But it balances that out by being completely adorable. And literally, look at that. That could be a stuffed animal. Where is it? I want one. Onto the actual build itself. It was very simple, so I'm not going to rate it that high. All right, the body was a lot more vibrant than the wings. That's why I added a layer of glass to give it that sort of milky effect, just like with the Luna Moth. All in all, it's a very solid build. Love it. 10 out of 10. Yes, it's not the best build. However, are you seeing its face? I think it'd be illegal to do anything but 10 out of 10. So this girl shall be named Gabby. And here's the completed moth. Up next, we have the Atlas Moth, which Latin name is Attacus Atlas, which is funny because Attacus literally just means attack. The opposite of the Rosy Maple Moth, this moth has one of the widest wingspans in the world, and if that thing landed on you, you'd probably have a heart attack. Depending on who you ask, the Atlas Moth is either named after the Greek myth of Atlas, which is one of the titans that holds up the world, or it's named after an actual Atlas because apparently someone looked at this guy's wings and thought that, yeah, that looks like a map. Onto the actual build itself, I tried to be creative with this build and give it a little bit of angle to the wing however that made it very like terraced and i don't like that the most but it's excusable it still looks great again i used the glass to get the right shade of orange because that one orange was too bright and the other was too red so we improvised baby all in all it's a very solid moth i'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10 not my favorite because i think the coloring is just a little bit bland it's not as bland as the polyphemus however that guy is just mud and as such the atlas moth should have a noble name which is why i am dubbing him toothpaste but his friends call him winston the third final product Next up, we have the Cercropia Moth. The Latin name is Hylophoria Cercropia. This moth was actually recommended to me by my mom. She came back into my room and was like, Hey, Carrie, Carrie, look at this. And I look over and I'm like, guess what is it? And she has a picture of a moth from Pinterest on her phone. She's like, you should make this. I know you're making moths. And I'm like, okay, I can't tell my mom no. So here we go. Honestly, very glad I did it. I did a little bit of a different style with this one as well. And I just built it upright. As you can see, I added a fair bit of detail to the wings. Very proud of that. I also chose this particular pose for this moth because I wanted to show off the body. As you can see, this guy is bright and very unique. I couldn't translate that as well as I wanted to into minecraft but i tried and i added the frills i'm very proud of that and unnecessary earrings but we'll just ignore the lanterns they're fine all in all pretty satisfied with this build as well i'm giving it an 8 out of 10 not as good as the atlas moth because this guy was very easy i mean the wings being upright just did half the work for me and it wasn't that much color to worry about other than the red still very cool though that's why it's better than the polyphemus because that guy's mud as for the naming because this guy seems a little bit pretentious i'm gonna name him sonora quick disclaimer i'm not talking about the mexican state i saw the name sonora on the side of the interstate when i was going through kentucky and i was like hmm cool name now time to see the moth <laughs> Last but not least, we have the Madagascan Sunset Moth. The Latin name for this moth is Chrysopedia rifius, and honestly, it is gorgeous. This may come as a surprise, but this moth is actually from Madagascar. Wow, who would have guessed? Onto the actual build, this one probably blew all the others out of the park. Like, look, got a little bit of a gradient going on there. It was very fun. I had to texture the edges. And then I used glass again to get the right color of green. And adding the spots was particularly tricky because on one hand, I had to make sure you could tell there were spots but i also lost a lot of detail because of them being blocks but i think it turned out really good and it looks great especially from a distance look how regal it is stunning or such a regal girl deserves a regal name and as such this is andromeda i would name her orion but that really doesn't sound as fancy so andromeda it is now presenting the lady herself <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, that was the last moth. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. That's very cool. And since you're still here, I might as well do a little sales pitch. I'm trying to make it to 100 followers on all of my like social media accounts, which includes right now Twitch, Twit, no, 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 not Twitter, not Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube. And on YouTube and TikTok, I got to 100. However, with Twitch, therein lies the problem. I'm at 54, which I've been doing it since April, which is a little bit cringy. So, if you're still here and you want to consider supporting me, please go follow me on Twitch as well as subscribe here. And thanks again!